praise to the Lord. Give our best to the Lord because His name, Jesus, is worthy to be praised. And don't stop, don't stop, and give applause to our Lord Jesus by the name for the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus is worthy to enthrone in our hearts, in every heart in this place. Because you are in the highest place, Lord, the first place in our hearts. And this is the best part in our life that is the truth of your words that has never been taken away from us. Your truth is our portion. And we are waiting for your voice. We are waiting in everything that, and every time that we are doing, in every time, in ev uh, every work, every jobs that we are doing. And now is the time for us to sit in the house of the Lord. And we know as we sit down, your word is the living water, and it will flow from the temple of the Lord, and it will fill every heart in this place your beloved church, so that when we go home, we will never be the same anymore. So when we go home, we will be changed. Every one of us will be more and more like in the image of you, Christ. Lord Jesus, we want to give, we'll make that decision right now so that your words will speak into our life. Anoint your words and hide us, hide me, your servant, behind your cross. In the name of Jesus, everyone, uh, everyone here that is hungry and thirsty of the words of the Lord, together we say, Amen. Shalom, everybody. You all now may be seated, our beloved church. So without we realizing uh, that come actually uh, come earlier and see uh, the opening video for the 2022 is the year of of dreams and visions uh, and how glorious is the dreams of the father of of the children. So can I know? Any of you actually remember all that sentences that is in the opening videos? Do you remember? Can you please raise your hands if you do? I, I don't see any hands actually, but I do you know. But when I asked this uh, in the Army of God uh, service, uh, actually, Pastor uh, Pao Pao at that time, and there is one, uh, he actually raised up his hands and he remembers. A sentence every sentence and for me that video is not just an opening video but it is an uh, it's a corporate anointing for every one of you that is in this house of the Lord that is with us throughout 2022 and if you believe in that say amen so and today is the last day that that video will be uh, this, uh, played in the beginning of the surface and when I say this is the last one can we say all oh, together so this is the last video that we're going to uh, play it last uh, for today so and for me this video is very special because every sentence is like a prophecy and I believe many testimonies from all of you and that are uh, that are born in the year of dreams and visions and I can see is it not very good if one more time can I ask the multimedia to play this video for us to enjoy and say amen to because this dream it has not yet finished in 2022 because in 2023 there will be uh, delivered by our pastor pastor Philip uh, the vision for next year but our meme our fish our dreams will continue to our to the next generation so that uh, we will keep it in our hearts and then let's watch it one more time uh, let's watch it the dreams of uh, the year of dreams and vision. Tahun 2022, tahun mimpi dan penglihatan. Oh, betapa mulianya mimpi Bapa atas kita anak-anaknya. Adopsilah dalam jiwa, visi kerajaan sorga atas hidup kita, atas keluarga kita, atas pekerjaan dan bisnis kita, atas masa kecil, masa muda, dan masa tua kita. 
2030 300 gereja urapan korporat untuk kita semua bayarlah harga kekudusan demi sebuah mimpi dari Allah apapun yang terjadi tahun ini peganglah perjanjianmu dengan Tuhan erat di dada bersabar dalam menanti janji sebab pengharapan tidak mengecewakan latihlah telinga roh dan kepekaan sebelum membuat perencanaan dalam hikmat-hikmat yang tak terduga bahkan langit pun bukanlah batasnya hingga keturunan kita menjadi berkat bagi bangsa-bangsa generasi bapa dan generasi anak berlomba-lomba dalam gelanggang ilahi visi anak-anak kita akan melampaui mimpi kita di sini Tuhan setia hingga ribuan generasi saling mengasihi dan saling mengampuni saat Tuhan meninggikan kita tiada batu sandungan bagi generasi anak panah melejit dari tangan pahlawan pandanglah jauh ke depan melampaui masa hidup kita lihatlah seribu gereja dan satu juta muridnya bolehkan kita bangkit berdiri dan kami please stand up and give a round of applause for the God's faithfulness for 2022 come on more come on Haleluya And let's say together Haleluya And say praise the Lord And now you all now may be seated So let's we hold tightly The dreams that God has put in our life Even the sky is not the limit That our God is a faithful God Until thousands of generations And then we keep always be run, Racing forwards in this faith um, the battle of faith so throughout this uh, throughout today uh, we're going to deliver this uh, message dreams becoming reality so let we zeal this and our, who is excited we're gonna have Christmas celebration next week and we cannot wait anymore and today we want to seal and God will also be at work until the fulfillment of your dreams and all the dreams that God has given to to you all and God will make it as reality so what we want to share I want to share today from the first one is the uh, the the life of Joseph uh, which is in the uh, first surface um, and then Joseph received uh, dreams and then the second surface Joseph was sold by his brothers and Joseph was uh, cut with what with Joseph and he was successful and fourth service is Joseph become uh, the ruler and then so that's this is the journey of Joseph when he received uh, dreams until it become a reality so I encourage you to watch all of these videos uh, that will be in the YouTube uh, brought, uh, it will be uploaded to YouTube and then after that if you do not have any other things to do and you can also have another service with, together with us it's one complete package uh, a story of Joseph that is always bless me uh, Joseph as a youth that received dream when he was 17 years old so Joseph received that dreams when he was 17 years old and if I remember I remember um, maybe some of you here is 17 years old or even actually younger but if you not longer 17 years old I I ask you to flash to a flashback and what did you do when you were 17 when I was 17 um, I was still wearing uh, my high school uniform and I was a, I had a dream later I will tell, share with you so Joseph when he was 17 and he received a, a dream and then it was in the book of Genesis of 37 and he went through a life process and he over there it seems like uh, the things that he has to go through it's not synchronized with the dream that he had the difference is not the good difference but it's actually a painful experience a difference that make him uncomfortable but even then Joseph was going through that until he gained victories and so Joseph is a figure in the Bible that can be a good example for us to see how we maintain our faith and we hold on to our faith in this difficult life process until we actually being promoted by God 
and he was as Joseph was promoted in when he was 30 years old so he received his dreams when he was 17 and only when he was 30 his dreams became a reality until he was also almost uh, 40 because when he was 30 he was promoted as a ruler and then for that seven years he had that plan to actually uh, save and uh, collect uh, food uh, for the for, for the period of famine and only until and then uh, about 37 and more I think that he was actually had reunited with his family so when so from he was 17 until 30 he, almost 40 so it's like 13 years old uh, 13 year 13 years it is a long time so 13 years it was he was has to gone through it with tears with questions with doubts and we say why this happened to our life and why this has to happen to us and we have these unanswered questions whether we going to keep holding on to our faith and believe in the dreams that God has given to us and we will keep holding on to the covenant that God has given to us and Joseph is an example that we can discover and also study together in this in this surface where Joseph was actually sold by his brothers so look, let's open together from the book of Genesis chapter 37 now we start from chapter from verse 12 and we're going to look until verse 36 so the, in the book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 12 to 36 Joseph sold by his brothers so before we actually read the Bible uh, why just Joseph was actually sold because his brothers was actually envious and hated him in the begin since the beginning he they already hated Joseph because his father loved um, Joseph more and the father made him a beautiful rope uh, and that's why uh, the brothers never actually liked Joseph so in that family condition that is not perfect there is a uh, family problems and over there Joseph actually received dreams that I shared with you in the first service so in that situation and whatever conditions God wants us to dream regardless what circumstances that we are facing problems that we have solved God still wants you to dream and that it's the will of God for us to dream because when we dream we actually hold on to God we put our hope in God if, if even though as men we have no reason to dream because this is not finished yet and that one is not finished yet so don't dream but then if our family members said that one day and then we can we become pessimistic and we said don't say it that way as for as long as our problems finish first or solve first but God teaches you that in the midst of your problems Joseph like Joseph Joseph received dreams so in 2022 has already almost gone uh, have you been dreaming for 2023 have you been come in the presence of the Lord and ask God and declare it with God and put your hope in God for 2023 and if you have not done that brothers and sisters it's not yet too late it's not too late yet and whatever is it whatever stories or whatever problem circumstances that happen in your life brothers and sisters go and make dream because when we dream we have faith can we say to our neighbors let's dream let's dream and when Jesus Joseph received his dreams, he actually shared it with his brothers. And what is his uh, dreams? He have, I think you have ever read it before in the book of Genesis 37. So he had a dream that his shift will all it's actually uh, stand up straight and then all the other all the brothers actually chief, uh, the shift of grains uh, bowed to him and then also he saw the uh, moons and the 11 stars also going down to him and then Joseph 
and then the brothers ask what kind of what kind of dreams is that do you think that your mother and i and your brothers will actually come and bow down to the ground before you so the brothers actually hated joseph even more and now uh, we enter the first 12. so let's read that now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flock near Sechem, and Israel said to Joseph, Israel is the Israel, which is uh, Jacob, which is the other names. As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Sechem, and come, and I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So Israel said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron when Joseph arrived at Sechem. So let's just stop there. Um, verse 15. So Joseph was hated because of his dream and because his father loved Joseph even more. And in the previous verses, before, because Joseph was someone who actually giving reports to his uh Father, how was the uh, brothers, how were the brothers actually when attending to the flocks? So Joseph was actually being hated because what he did and also what he had dreamed because of his dreams. So that's why the brothers couldn't actually say good words to him. So usually if because of you are doing something and then uh, people hated you, that's usually we are in the position, like if for example we in the position of Joseph and we tell father uh, for what it is uh, about our siblings, then usually uh, then we will be hated by our siblings. and. If for that, we usually will not do it anymore because otherwise we, uh, you will get hated even more. So these 11 brothers uh, hated Joseph. So it could have been that Joseph think that rather than I'm being uh, not comfortable in this house, then I better not doing uh, any reporting to the fathers because he, it could have been that Joseph not doing whatever that the father is asking but when Israel we, when uh, Jacob's which is Joseph's father as for as Joseph to find his brothers so now just find your brothers and actually uh, gracing the flock near the Shechem and let, let's see what Joseph replied, Yes, Father. Yes, Father. So, brothers and sisters, and this is a response, the heart response of G Joseph that is written in the Word of God so that we also going to have this kind of uh, heart attitude. Like Joseph, whatever important is not the circums the situations or the problems that happen but what is important is our heart response and how we actually responded to things or events that have that got allowed in to happen in our life controls is not in our hands whatever that happens it's not in our controls yes but our response our reactions to our problems is in our control we have control over the responses of the heart attitudes and Joseph had this kind of uh, good heart as, uh, attitude when he was being hated when he was rejected and he said yes father so in 2022 we almost uh, finished this year because we are now in December brothers and sisters we do not just experience all the good things in 2022 that must be things that you may not want to remember anymore there must be things in 2022 that you regret be it like wrong decisions failures you want to forget all about it you want to think that if i just have second chance i would do a different way or better uh, other decisions or maybe other events that made a conflict in your relationship or misunderstanding with each other and that 
event or made your heart in, 20, in this end of the year 2022 and make our heart actually um, uh, broken-hearted or like we do not want to meet people or we feel cold in our hearts or we have assumption that that person is just like that. It's fine. I do not want to be close with them and we become cold. And ya, we no longer Bapak. become yes, Tapi Father, but jauh, we become, we put our distance. We do not want to respond or we do not want to put ourselves in the meetings komunitas, komunitas, or the communities. Why? Because we have disappointments, because ada we have conflicts, ada yang, because we have kita, a kita response that we actually surprises us we have good intentions but to we want we are willing help to help but we are actually being deceived and then uh, we reject to help people we we refuse to do good things and I often hear stories say that don't become uh, someone who is too good don't be too naive Brothers and sisters, God says, yes is yes, no and is no. Good is good. So if you do want to be too good, then good, the opposite is bad. We cannot be in the gray areas. We cannot be in the area where just ordinary, just look warm. But God called us, every one of us, every believers, to become salt and light. What? What, what does it mean? That we means that we need to have conflicts. Maybe in this afternoon, the word of God actually talk to you. If any of you in this end of the year actually have a cold hearted that don't want to meet people, and maybe you are disappointed with your neighbors, God is speaking to you right now with love. God is telling you. His word is true that every believer is actually made to become salt and light in the midst of everyone, everywhere that you have put. If he no longer salty, then how can it be salted anymore? And if you are actually cold, what could it be being salted? Maybe people say, for as long as my relationship with God, I, keep, I, can, I, I actually keep it with I take care of it, but brothers and sisters, your spiritual growth is also being measured. How is your relationship with others? It cannot be, uh, uh, it cannot be counted out. So if we want to evaluate uh, for throughout this year, whether or not we grow spiritually, then you can ask yourself whether or not this year you actually be, be more attentive to others actually you are more sensitive with others needs or am I more caring am I more comforting am I more loving am I more patient with others am I have more caring with others but if your answers when you ask all of these questions to yourself and that questions actually shock you and you realize that this year I am not actually care more about others, more care, but I actually, uh, you pulling out of other people, you actually not more having more mercy, but I actually uh, fed up dealing with people. So until you evaluate all of this, maybe in the end of the year, maybe not showing that there is uh, these are sensors that actually loving others is to actually make you grow even more. And now this has actually become an alarm for you, whether or not you actually grow spiritually, because when you grow spiritually, it's actually uh, it's a parallel glow uh, from the, our knowledge of God and also it's our uh, commandment from God to love others as well. And Joseph said, yes, Father. So let 
delay, let's add not delay uh, if there is a, a, a chance from the church to actually do our cream, Christmas events, our but it's not only in December, but also remind us one more time that to walk uh, our ways, our days, that we are called to show that Lord God is real in this life because human cannot see God, but people can see God through us. If we do not actually display that is God as Christians, if we do not actually see, show that we are, God is actually love, and if we cannot actually show love, then how can people see love? That if God is love in our life and we just keep it to ourselves, and we don't actually share that love to others, then the world will not be able to see the love of God. And Joseph said, yes, Father. And I also pray that the church here in this second service are those people who actually respond to this challenge and we say, yes, Father, so that your growth and your maturity in God is actually going to be real. And, and one more time, so that your maturity uh, in Christ, it's actually, and who, who is here want to grow more in God? And I want to measure our growth, whether or not we actually love others more. And I want to respond to that. Yes, Father, I want to that. I want it. And then after Joseph actually arrived in Shechem, so now we're going to continue in verse 15. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here. The man answered, I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But so Joseph, uh, if we look at from the map, from his house to Shechem and then after that to Dothan, it's actually further. So it's not So it's not actually uh, getting closer back to his house. But, and then Dotan is actually further out from his house. So for us to receive the fulfillment of God's dreams and visions that has been promised to us so that our dreams can become reality, Joseph not only have a good response or hard attitude, but he also give his best. So good is not we do we do not just stop at good, but we it's actually we give the best. So what is best from Joseph is actually the extra mile. He walked the extra mile. So in that journey, it may not be one day, and Shigam at it's a place where. So, so the ancestors of Isaac that was that were actually had uh, wars and then they they were actually uh, defeated the people of Shechem the Israelites actually defeated the Shechem so when if the brothers actually went to Shechem there is a chance that the people want to actually get revenge to the family uh, of Jacob so it's actually a dangerous place and and he actually went to, uh, Joseph was actually went to a dangerous place to find his brothers and also to meet his brothers. He was actually had this, pro, uh, has this un, uh, unrest feeling about meeting his brothers, but he kept still saying, yes, father. So he went there and then he couldn't find the brothers and he still asked to find uh, them, the brothers. And then he and then the person said that it was actually in Dothan. So, brothers and sisters, Joseph could have had two responses. He said, oh, they're not in Shechem. It's fine. They are safe. So, my, my dad actually told me to check my brothers whether or not they are safe or... Uh, they they were they got into problems with the people of Shechem. Oh, they're not no longer in Shechem. They are safe. Uh, Joseph could have just gone home. Uh, they are safe. So that 
would be Joseph's first reaction that his brother is no longer in Shechem and he go, Joseph just go home. But he didn't do that. He did the second response, which is that the brother said, uh, because the father said he he was told by his father to find his brothers. So Joseph went to find his brothers until he, he could find them, which is in Doton. So it is not enough for us to realize that our heart conditions actually cold or traumatized with relationship, uh, lazy to meet people. It is not enough for us to just realize that. Yes, it is good to realize that, but it's even better and to give the best, which is to release forgiveness, to release forgiveness. Why? Because what we actually holding on and that forgiveness that we don't release without we realize it and that could become the stumble block from dreams becoming reality. It could be a hindrance so that the dreams will not become reality and you will keep wandering around in the desert and that's because of the heart as uh, the wrong heart attitude and that could be an example that we can do it not only to say yes father and realize it but to actually give the extra mile so brothers and sisters if we realize that the experiences or the events that we uh, experience in 2022 that is actually uh, not doing right let's we solve it let's we um, have closure for that in 2022 so that we will not carry the overweight baggage into 2023 so that when we enter 2023 we have a good heart we enter 2023 with a heart that is can face God and also can reflect the word of God through our actions in life and we don't delay our obedience and today God invited you God invites you to solve to actually deal with your heart and to give uh, to do this extra mile to walk the extra mile and do this when maybe you need to find that person uh, to have closure with them uh, to speak with them and maybe we have a different cultures of uh, doing communications with others maybe you are upfront or maybe you actually keep it to yourself it's all right you don't have to uh, talk about it rather than you have conflicts maybe if uh, I talk about it then it's gonna be uh, conflicts maybe we just have a uh, faith in the positive things that can come out of it rather than we say rather than having conflicts we change that we say with faith when we talk about it we will deal with it when we talk about it there will be peace when we talk about it God will be involved amen so because many times what we actually worry about it will not happen what we assume it's not right often we say we are afraid we are afraid of conflicts afraid uh, the, the problem's gonna get bigger but in reality if we have the good attitude uh, our response we're not looking for uh, justifications for what we are doing but truly for 2022, we want to uh, get rid of all the hindrances or the problems and put behind everything in 2022 and then to release forgiveness and we give uh, right intentions, believe that when we come with peace, peace will, enter on, uh, will be enthroned in every relationship. Hallelujah. And Joseph said, okay, let's go. So he went after his brothers and then he found them in Dothan. And then, uh, how was the brothers' reactions? Will the will they welcome him very uh, warmly? No, right? 
So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan and verse 18, but they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Even before uh, Joseph was close to him, here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from, his, from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said to this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing. And they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty, there was no water in it. And as they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Israelite, Ismailites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, bomb, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up in blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ismailites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchants came by, he brushed, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to Ismailites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben he, so Joseph, at that time when he uh, went closer, the brother said, look at this dreamer. And they actually plotted something uh, to kill him. And let's see, let's kill him. And then, then we'll see what come of his dreams. So whether or he believe in God, and if we listen to people around us, look at him, always go to the church always do ministry see even his problems never ends look at this dreamer and we see how could it comes of his dreams and we know the end of the story we know that until chapter 50 that God actually promoted Joseph Joseph was sold but God actually redeemed him Joseph was forgotten by human but God actually promoted him. So if people say, how could have happened with your, what comes of your dreams? Don't actually, we are, uh, we, act, we actually uh, regretted our dreams and we think uh, twice what this happened. Um, why why actually people hated me? I am sincere to others, but people don't. Brothers and sisters, when we want to receive the fulfillments of God's promises, we need to have our heart cleansed, like, like, like gold that has to be put in fire that we actually being tested. Our faith is also tested so that we can only put our hope in God not because of our might not because of our strength our faith will be tested how it could it be and only at that time Joseph put his hope or in his dreams or he actually put his hope in the giver of his hope so when we actually uh, when we have experienced bad things are we only looking for the blessings or the blesser or we are asking like why why God actually giving me this prophecy but it's not actually fulfilled brothers and sisters that is the time when we are being tested when we have process I have uh, there is our there is a strength or or our pride that has to be nullified. Why? Because our pride needs. Because when when Joseph came with his ornate robe, the first thing that the brothers actually took it, that the brothers actually took it away from him. And I, if if it was written in the Bible, it is something that uh, there is a purpose because the ornate robe is a pride because it is something that is proof 
as a proof that he is the loved one. So one time when we had many friends and we were followed by many people, we have many followers, and at one time, all of these people leave you, actually uh, deceive you or betray you. One thing, we do not need these followers or accept or love us or but if only we have one like from God, all the heavens is with you. All heavens is with you. So all these Hilefert brothers actually plotted some, uh, plotted to kill him and take away his robe. And it was written that he, they took him, uh, they took his ornament he robe. So in the in the journey when we receiving dreams and for that to become reality, when in the work of faith. When we follow in Jesus, we need to take off our robe. We need to take off our ego, to take off our pride, to take off our own strength. Why? Because when we actually arrive at the destinations, we say it is because of God's grace. It is all because of His grace grace and in his grace then we have strength so we read in the words of God like those who are waiting on the Lord is like eagles then they will they will read good they will have new strength they will walk and they will not get weary they'll run and they will not get tired how, how, how could that be? Log logically, it doesn't work that you actually walk and you don't get tired and you run, you go, get weary. Yes, because God is supernatural. It's, it's illogical because God is deeper. We cannot phantom with our own understandings. Everything that we are experiencing, Joseph was actually sold for 20 shekels. And I remember Jesus was also sold by Judas his own disciple, sold Jesus and betrayed Jesus. And Joseph also experiences and hear that he, his faith was tested, whether or not he actually uh, relying on his own strength. If God allowed us to be in problems, God allowed in the family, for example, as if like this person uh, or this child cannot be uh, disciplined. We prayed, or maybe I got uh, wrong parenting techniques, or uh, this kid actually becoming teenagers now, and and they no longer uh, can be uh, connect to him or her. And as parents, we are confused. We think that we have done everything. We've prayed. Also, I never actually hit my kids. And also, I always care. I never actually compare my kids with others. Brothers and sisters, when let when we do not know what we need to do, when in in your business, we don't know what we have to do. We don't know where we have to seek help, when to find solution from. Brothers and sisters, this is now the place, the best place. If word says that it is a dead end, the kingdom of heaven said it is now. Uh, it's a point, or this is now the uh, the best place where we can put our hope in God. That we actually put our hope more in God. Isn't that better? Until we, uh, I hope we don't uh, we don't wait until we have no other options. Then we just put our God our hope in God. It, we are busy every day and we should not put our our prayer time or our quiet time right at the last options but in the morning you you wake up you face God and you know that I cannot actually go through today without the strength from God I cannot go through today with my yesterday's experiences because our experiences will not 
actually uh, help us, it will give us wisdom, but also not human's wisdom will help us, but the power of the uh, God Spirit will help us to go through all the struggles, not the wisdom of man, not our uh, previous experiences will help us. But like Joseph, we need to take off our robe. So towards the end of 2022, let's come before God with humility. Let's take off every ego, every pride, every experience. Let's just sit and be still at the feet of the Lord. Don't be in hurry. Uh, maybe you have some of professions that actually very uh, busy. It's like his high season in December, for example. But it is very important and it's very crucial for every one of us, the believers, to sit still, to be still and sit at the feet of the Lord. Because that vision or the, that dreams not finished this year and then next year, of visions, we will listen to the new vision from Pastor Philip. Uh, but that vision or that dream is not finished this year because our God is the God of generations, thousands of generations for our descendants and what we can inherit for them is that our faith that we can actually enter 2023 with before that we face God. Let's take off everything and let's allow God to reset everything from zero, take off everything, not to, you enter 2023, not with uh, with your own experiences, with your own strength. So after the brothers actually sold him for 20 shekels, so when Reuben actually came back uh, to that cistern um, and saw Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there, where can I turn now? Then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the honored robe back to their father and said, we found this, examine it and to see whether it is your son's robe. So when uh, Jacob recognized it and said, it is my son's robe, some ferocious animal has been deformed him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and mourned for his son for many days. All his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, I will continue to mourn until I join my son in the grave. So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh officials, the captain of the guard. So Joseph was sold to the Midianites. So brothers and sisters, before Joseph was sold to the Midianites, ever actually you think whether or not actually Joseph was actually put into the cisterns with water, he could have been died already. But I believe that system was being dried up by God. And often we see our life when we fall into a hole, we actually uh, blame the the hole or the, the events when we complain, when we protest to God. We cannot see uh, God's fingerprints in the events that God allowed to happen in our life. So when Joseph, uh, Joseph here couldn't see that he would be a ruler when he was 30. Yes, we could see because we read the Bible. Because from 37, uh, chapter 37, we can read it up through the 50. And many of us here know that, yes, Joseph's dream become reality. But Joseph that was living at that time, he didn't know what would happen to him the next day. So when he was thrown into the cistern, there was no water in there. And that, I believe, it's God's work. So imagine when he was thrown into the cistern, the brothers was having lunch. And in that verses, yes, we read it. Uh, but when he then met again, then the brothers said, uh, they were crying, asking for mercy. So, if we imagine the moment when Joseph was in the cistern was very dramatic. So, he was in the cistern and he was not given lunch. 
So he was hungry, right? So he walked all the way from the camp, and he they took away their rope, and he asked for help. And the brothers were just having lunch. So, and then he was taken out of Joseph was taken out of the cistern, and he was sold to the Midianites. And then, even Joseph was asking for help. And then when they were actually, uh, they got reunion, uh, Joseph was actually asking the brothers to actually relieve the events. So Joseph was asking at that time, help, don't sell me, don't sell me. Isn't that painful? So when we actually uh, in problems, in struggles, we actually pleading help from others. And we are we are in a bad conditions. We asking for help, but people actually not helping. But get, actually talk back to you. See, I told you, I told you. But Joseph, uh, according to from first uh, from chapter thirty seven to fifty, he kept belief in God. He kept believing in God. He did not complain, not even once, and he never turned back his heart from God because he believed in one thing and this is what made thing what uh, this is the thing that made his dreams become uh, become reality even though he went through all the difficult processes because he old Joseph was holding on to one principle that God is at work God is at work in everything uh, uh, in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 28 let's open it together from the book of Romans chapter 8, tw verse 28. So, and let's read it together with our best voice. The book of Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we, so when we read this and I pray so that God's fingerprints throughout 2022 will open your spiritual eyes and we can see that God actually brings good things in your life. So in the count of three, let's read this. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. So, brothers and sisters, every one of you is called according to his purpose. Every one of us has a unique calling. Maybe you are called to become a mentor or become a figure in your workplace. Or you to actually call to bring Bibles or the good news, the gospel to those in this, uh, those friends in the city. So every one of us have a calling in God's purpose, in God's plans, and in this journey, everything that happened, God actually allowed it to happen to bring good things to you. So we see, isn't that God's intervention so that the cistern was empty with no water? Isn't that also it's God's intervention that he Joseph was not left in the cistern? Uh, actually, Reuben's intention was, okay, don't kill him and just leave it to the cistern because Reuben will take him out. But then Judah uh, actually intention, don't kill him because he is our own flesh and blood and just sell him so brothers and sisters isn't that god's work that joseph was sold was sold to the midianites and then after that he was also sold to potiphar's people so joseph was actually god's uh, chosen one to actually save the generations the saved thousands of generations joseph was used by god to save the israelites from famine if Joseph was not sold as slave, Joseph actually not rejected by brothers and was sold by 20 shekels, then Joseph would not be become God's uh, way, God's vessel to save the Israelites from uh, famine. God, Joseph was become then a ruler. He's not the Pharaoh, but he was as powerful as the Pharaoh. Joseph was promoted by God. 
dreams becoming reality. Three uh, simple points that we want to take home. What's important is not actually the events or the circumstances, but it's our heart attitude, not with our own strength, but we need to put our hope to God. And we need to remember that God is at work to bring good things in your life. So hold on to three these things so that in the end of the 2022, as we lift up our dreams, when we give thanks to the Lord in our hearts, we always have the good heart attitude, the good heart response to God, to what God was doing, and not to rely to our own strength. This is now the best season for us to humble ourselves before God. We take off our rope, take off our pride our ego and say to God, Lord, it is fine if to this year I was sold. I am sold. It's fine if I'm rejected. It is fine, God, if I'm being betrayed. It's fine if I was being misunderstood because I know that you are at the front and you are going to bring me the good things in our life. Hallelujah. I invite all of you now. Let's raise and give our round of applause for our God. Let's sing a song of dreams and visions. Let's seal God's plan in our life, brothers and sisters. Even the sky is not the, the sky is not the limit. If there is something that we need to deal with, maybe that kind of uh, those things actually becoming hindrances uh, for the dreams to become reality. So let's today, with open heart, with open uh, that wants to be searched by the Holy Spirit, let we take it off and we deal with it before God. And I believe when you go home from this place, you are with God and you will walk uh, with joy and peace with God to receive the new dreams to enter 2023. And let's together, we worship God.